Yep. Great, thanks. Um, so I'd like to call the meeting to order at uh, 7.03 p.m. The attendees I show are Carl, Linda, Alyssa, Shannon, and Jennifer. Could I ask one of the task force members to volunteer to take minutes for tonight, please? Okay, Alyssa, are you on mute? No, I was just reading. Okay, me. all right. Okay, great. So I make a motion to approve the August 1st, 2023 meeting minutes that I sent to all of you. Are they okay with everybody got a chance yep. to read them and approve? Yep, I'm good. Great. I also forwarded you the ones Evan had correct, done some corrections from the May and June 2023 minutes. Are we, I'm okay to approve those. Does everybody else have read them? I had, a lot, I had a lot of questions about those and I was wondering if we could take a longer chance to take a look at them and maybe clarify some of the things in them. Uh, um, try and do it now or um, there's a lot, there's just a lot of before you do that, did you do a roll call? Oh, I just said, I, I, I actually said who was here. I didn't okay, hear anybody fine. say yes, but yes, I did ask who was here. Thank you. And to clarify, I, I am doing the minutes, correct? Um, Alyssa volunteered to do them this time. Oh, if, if, okay. if that's good. Thank you. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it because this helps. Okay, so as far as those meeting minutes, so. I, I said, uh, I have a lot of questions. You wanna go over them one by one or uh, or uh, hold off until we have, you know, maybe I have time to look at them a little bit longer and clarify some of the things in them. I think that uh, we could hold it to the end because I know um, a few of us, including Shannon, are in a time crunch and she's going to present early on. And also, I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because Evan put those together in um, one of the meetings I didn't attend. I mean, I think we can talk about them at the end if we want. All right. I'd rather hold off on approving them until we... Uh, okay, let's talk. Are you ready when we're when we get to the end? If you want to share your screen, you can go through those questions. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So from the August first meeting, which I did those and sent them to you, um, one of the things that we agreed on was that all the task force members would submit survey questions, and they sent those to me. A couple questions each. I collected them all. Thank you, everybody and sent those to Shannon and Donna. And just to clarify, if it wasn't clear already from the minutes, there's no town survey planned, so we would never have it uh, ready anyway. There would never be a, a done on a timely basis. So Shannon is going to update us on um, some thoughts and what we could do with the survey. Shannon, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, so where Donna and I left off with Beth is that um, we provided some feedback um, on the questions that you all provided. If you'd like, actually, Beth, I can share my screen and pull up what um, Donna and I had sent to you as our feedback just to give um, other members a chance to read yeah. through that really quickly. That would be great. Thank you. All right, you guys can see that okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so, yep, I just compiled the questions that um, you all had sent, and Donna's and my thoughts were um, pretty similar, which overall I would say um, we were having a hard time um, getting the, the full understanding of what your aim from the survey was. Um, the questions just seemed like they were coming from different perspectives. We were trying to figure out what the theme of the survey was. Um, and then our other thoughts were that some of the questions- Shannon, were... I just lost your uh, volume. Can you all hear her? Yes, I can. Yes. Shannon, 
Yep. Can you also yeah. email that list out to? Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, can you hear me okay, Beth? No, I can. I think the internet connection's unstable. That's what I'm getting messages. Thank okay. you. No problem. Um, and then the other thing that um, Donna and I were speaking about were some of the questions at the end felt like um, the board already had feelings on what the answer to that question would be like as if you already had identified what you thought the problem was um such as like maybe in um like five six seven I think we we had said that like it the way the questions were framed as were as if maybe you guys knew um that there were issues that were happening over at White Pond or that you have already heard that no, I lost you, you didn't feel that I can't hear. Sorry, can someone not hear me again? Can other I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Yep, you can hear me. Um yeah, well anyway, that was about the gist of it. They some of the questions just seemed like you guys already had an opinion on on what the the answer to the question was. Um, but I can I can send you guys um, what these thoughts were. I had um, sent them over to Beth and Donna was also willing to speak with Beth more about this offline. Um, but I, I think things kind of got left off there in the last email I sent to Beth. Yeah, we didn't have that meeting. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I didn't vet those, Shannon, uh, just so you know yeah because yeah everybody, right and so um thank you for taking a look in the comments i think if we can quickly look at them before you sign off yeah sure i think it would be good while we're all here yeah um can you scroll up shannon to the beginning thank you okay so in general in your discussion with Donna, was there a recommendation that we keep the surveys to, you know, just a certain length of, you know, a minimum of five, six questions and yes, no answer for, or was there any comment on that? Um, there wasn't much comment on that, but what Donna did let me know today is that um, she, as the communications manager, now has like one of the professional level accounts with SurveyMonkey. Um, so she would still be able to set up a pretty good online survey for you guys. Um, but Donna had a couple comments at the bottom that were more specific to the formatting of the question. Like I think she had recommended a multiple choice question versus another, but we don't need to get into that at, at this point. Oh, no, I, I mean, I think it's good. That's important. If that's one of the, and that's her role, if that's one of the recommendations, I think we should take it. Um, so with that in mind, if we have multiple choice, then number one, are you aware that it's open to the public for swimming? And I, I, I don't know whose question this was, but I think it might be important because in Carl's discussion with Park and Rec, Anna, you know, that was one of her things to kind of say, we want people to know if they're at the Cove, do they even know that White Palm Beach is open? because maybe there's a lack of awareness. Although I don't know how you say yes, you make that multiple choice. So, well, so um, yeah. Donna and I did also like, this is again, just going along with the theme that we felt like we weren't understanding. So if someone says no to that question, do you want them to complete the rest of the survey? Yes, because that's just a question about if they know that they don't have to necessarily have a membership and they can get over there. And if they're in the cove, they don't have to swim in the cove um, with no, you know, facilities and um, in a place they're not supposed to be. Right. Because we just don't know if there's awareness that there is an availability. Uh, and I'll further that by saying the ranger has been instructing people to just say that as well. Um, to say, did you know you can go to the white Palm beach, pay $5 and go in. And so I know that she has been trying to educate people and um, the trail person, the steward put a couple of signs up saying the same thing. And I know that's Carl, if you want to add anything to that in your discussion with Anna too, about that people may not be aware of that, mm -hmm. um, but maybe it's not pertinent. I think it's pertinent to the protection of white pond if we want to 
keep the the numbers down in the cove. So that's can I, Carol. Can I go back even to the that first paragraph in the second sentence? What is that? What why is that saying residents residents can be better informed about the pond as a recreational natural resource and the challenges in preserving via education and funding? Where does where does that come from? That seems like a weird thing to start off with the survey saying that um that people, the residents could be better informed about the pond. I mean, isn't it? Where, where did that come from? I can't answer that, Alyssa. Shannon, did you put that in? I mean, who put I, that in? I did not touch any of, of these questions. Um, so if well, there's going to be an, uh, if there's going to be an introduction to the survey, we can absolutely reword that yeah. if that's what the point of that was. That was the point to that. I think that's the, I don't think that sentence is in a, the appropriate tone to set. And I don't, I think we're, at, we're trying, I think we should be, yeah, as even Shannon says, you know, what are we trying to get out of this survey? So that's what we should be giving people in the background. Um, I think we as the task force want to be better informed about how the public feel. Yeah, that was one of the charges. Yeah, and that's what that I agree. That's what that sentence should say instead of what it says now. I think that's a good point. Yeah, is that what the point was supposed to be? Yeah, which okay. So, Alyssa, do you want to? take a stab at rewording that intro? I mean, it, 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 sure. okay. All right, so the next one was, the next one, when we talk about the charge being the preservation and protection of White Pond, it says, are you aware that the White Pond has for the past two years done this yada yada? I don't know if that's an important survey question anymore. It could be, I don't know if Shannon and Donna or you talked about that, but one of our recommendations that the task force all agreed upon last month was that that's going to be a recommendation, right? The APODs, we're recommending that it stays in the water as a, a yeah, preventive or as a ongoing measure, but does the town or the community know about this? I, I'm not sure if that's why we wanted that question in there. I think it's a good question because I think there are some people that still think of White Pond as, yeah, have, having been shut down so often. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? Well, it's not just APOD. I mean, there's been mitigation of stuff going into the water, whether it be septic or drains from washing machines. They've changed the street runoff. So I don't know if we can isolate. I, I think we should, if, if that's what we want to say, we want to make the public aware that the white pond is cleaner should be a pod or, or just a, a variety of technologies or list them yeah because it's more than a pod i i don't disagree carl except that in the past two years the two years that we've been able to swim the only changes that we know of in the past two years are the introduction of the a pod the lack of the rainbow trout and then we had the drainage at the you know the new beach thing right. and i think everybody should know about that because that was a town i mean that was a gigantic deal right well i don't th no i think part i think i agree with carl it should say like apid technology storm water improvement on the state boat ramp and erosion controls on the slopes and if um, the answer yes or no, is that going to guide us any further for what our survey's purpose is? That's my next question. I would say no, but again, maybe the purpose of this is to inform people. If the purpose of the uh, survey is to inform people, that may help. If it's going to change our actions, no, I don't think it's going to change. Because to your point, you know, Beth, we want APOD in well, the recommendation. We're going to continue to recommend signage. Well, we're, going to continue, we're going to recommend signage. <laughs> So it's not going to change our test, but it may help inform the public. Well, perhaps we add that to the introduction then. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. 
if if we're saying, you know, these Measure. improvements have been made, and we're not asking them, do you know about them or not? Because that's I, that's not particularly relevant. But just letting you know, having that be part of the introduction, and then um, beginning the survey. That's a, a good point. Does everybody, I, I think that's a great intro, right? These improvements have been made over the past two years and, or a couple of years, um, and then start Yeah, I think that's, a really, I think that's right. a really good message out to the public, for sure. And then the question, yeah. question too, yeah, can be that, are you aware that they've been successfully reduced algal blooms, but you don't have to specify the technologies? Okay. But, but what I would, but I, what I was saying was that algal bloom put it in the introduction, introduction that the algal blooms have been successfully reduced by you know A, B, C, all the reasons we've just gone over, and then maybe we don't need to ask them if they were aware of that before. I mean, we just told them they were aware of that, so it yeah. doesn't really make sense to ask the question. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the survey, we can have a, a, a comment section about anything and people could say, wow, I didn't know that, <laughs> which would tell us that communication isn't great, right? But it's not what we need right now to protect the pond unless there's a strong feeling that they want to keep. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's good. I think the introduction is good. So then really, number two is gone. Yeah, I agree. Gone altogether, or just to, just no, oh, no. It's in the intro just to, now. Just to say, well, the 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 intro is going to say that 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 the blooms have been reduced the past two years, but you don't think it's worthwhile to ask people if they were aware that um, the town has done all these things to reduce it, and that you know that that there's no blooms. I, I thought that's what we just discussed. That it could go in the intro. In the past few years, the town has. Um, right, uh, that's telling them. So what I'm I'm saying is, in question two, are you ask? Should you be asking them whether they're aware of that? They weren't. I mean, I, they may not have been aware of that until they just read it in the introductory paragraph. So uh, I think because I think people have have this concept. May some people have a concept that you know the white pond is contaminated, um, and so this would get at their their feelings about the concept of, you know, is White Pond a good, you know, swimmable pond? Uh, anybody else have a feeling here? I think- Well, no, I, I think if this is a vehicle to communicate with the public, then that's good. I, I, I would suggest that we could do more than that. Like, uh, you know, put an article on the, on the bridge. We could, uh, you know, potentially have, we talked about before having booths at particular activities that we think are you know, impactful, but I mean, but I think getting the message out to the public is a positive thing. Yes. If this works, but I, I got to tell you, I mean, surveys like uh, Anna was talking about Concord Rec, they had 600 people respond out of 15,000. So I don't know how many people look at these, but, but yeah, you know, is, you know, I guess, you know, you just do a shotgun blast everything you can, I guess. Okay. Let's just go back to square one for a minute. We just the the I think the ship has sailed on us going to you know having things like Egg Day because you know I talked with Linda a little bit. We have a deliverable that's supposed to be delivered by you know end of December. So if we want this survey to collect any meaningful information that we can use that will help us for our recommendations to the select board, I think we've got to be thinking of it in that that way. Um, so. If we ask some of these questions, does it tell us something? And I'm just talking out loud right now. Please, uh, you know, beep in anytime. If we ask some of these questions, would that tell us an answer that maybe we and the town or whoever haven't been successful in educating people about the things that have done been done? And that means one of our recommendations is to continue having, you know, this website on the town and the things that are going on. Yeah, we just, this is supposed to help us make further recommendations for the protection of White Pond. Does that make sense? So yeah. asking- I, I mean, Beth, you know my opinion, I, I don't think the survey makes sense for that. I think we know what needs to be done, but but um, okay. I don't want to be in a-, a, a No, no, a I mean, I think that's a good- either. I, I think, you know- That's you know, a good comment. They, they, they want to clean- 
people want a clean pond. I think we should get the word out if we can get some vehicle to do that. But to get information for this year's report, no, I, I don't think there's, well, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see anything here that's going to answer the report. Well, I, I would say the reason uh, it's important is because it was part of the charge to involve the public, unless I'm, I could be incorrect, but I thought that um, we were supposed to be getting feedback from residents on, you know, what what they would want. Um, and a survey is a, is a good way to do that. And I think when we talk about protecting the pond, I think, I mean, I think it's clear that everybody wants good water quality without algal blooms. I mean, that's that's clear. But when you talk about other, what other it is involved in protecting the pond and the watershed, I don't think we've really attacked that at all. So this is Linda. Can may I make a comment? Can you hear please, me? Please, yeah. Linda. Um, yep. So I, I see the, uh, certainly see an argument for who um, making a statement in the um, introductory comment section, but then also asking the question specifically, are you aware um, of the various techniques? Because I think that's a form of engagement, public engagement, <laughs> and can be positive when you take that approach in a survey. That's my only point. Okay. All right. So where we're at now is we would have this introduction with the things that have been done and you know what we're charged to do. And then we go into the questions and do one and two both, should they both be there? We, we we just got to narrow this down so we can get something to Shannon and Donna. I think so. Mm -hmm. My opinion is that if I had to give up one of them, I would give up number two. Because the feedback that I've gotten from probably spoken to a half a dozen people who had no idea that White Pond Beach is open to the public. Um, because if they've lived here a long time, they've thought, you know, it's private, you can't, can't go there unless you're a resident or a member. And I, I think it's important to get the word out that it, it is open to the public. Um, that's just my opinion. So if other people think number two is more important, no, I think, yeah, no, Jennifer, thank you. I think they're both important. So let's just go ahead and say one and two we'll keep right now, right? And I also, um, I didn't mean to suggest that you all um, need to significantly cut the survey. If you guys want to have eight questions, I think that's totally fine. No, thank you, Shannon. I think, but we do need to narrow it down. And if it if you looked as objective observers of this and didn't think it uh, flowed or you weren't sure about the point, I think we just agree one and two are important for what we're reframing now and then we just go through them. But no, yeah, exactly. So let's just, let's go through. So when you and Donna talked, what do you value about White Pond? Is, is that, did did you think those things came out of left field or what was your opinion from the survey? Because I'm just curious. I I mean, I'm I don't think Donna and I really spoke very specifically about the content of the questions because I'll be honest, um Donna and I are very unfamiliar with White Pond, which is ironic that I'm sitting in on this conversation <laughs> right now talking about are you aware and what about it? Um, so I I really think that if 
it it's your it's your all's judgment on if you think that it's going to be informative and the feedback you've heard but I just think that more so our our feelings were and more directed towards these these ending questions that were more um open-ended um yeah sorry it was a mute um can you scroll down a little again Shannon yeah. to your uh and Donna's Okay. Are the people management? So personally, uh, I like both your comments uh, and everybody chime in, but I think the question that uh, Donna wrote, are the people management efforts at the town beach too lax appropriate too strict? I think that's important to get the, the feedback from people who aren't just us. I think the conservation land question isn't necessarily our our question, but it could be. But I like that the efforts right. of the town beach because that's a lot of things we get feedback on, right? That there's a ranger, but she has no enforcement or he has no enforcement or they're not there enough, you know? Yeah, I think when Donna put town conservation land, I think she was um, referring to the cove is what I understood. Oh, well, oh okay. that portion of the cove is a conservation land. Yeah, that's what I that's where I think her head was at there. Okay. So um I, want, I, mean, I, I like Donna's way of reframing eight better than what we had personally. I agree, totally. I don't know. Do we need the town beach question or not? Because as Carl mentioned, they've done a lot of surveys from Park and Rec as well. Do we really want it to be the town conservation land in the cove? Because the beach is yeah. managed by Park and Rec? Well, it's managed by Park and Rec, but only during season and only during daylight hours. So I, I don't, I think there's a lot of time um, that is not managed hands-on by the recreation department. Actually, that's a really good point because that's another thing we hear all the time, right? When the beach closes, the lifeguards are no longer there. There's no management. And um, yeah, that's important. Maybe it can be rephrased slightly at, during different seasons of the year. Like for instance, I had five calls this weekend from people who observed a foil, a hydrofoil or whatever you call them in the pond, the kind that go up on a, you know, they go up and they're speeding around. I, I don't think it was gas, gas isn't allowed, but apparently, you know, just zipping around the pond at really huge speeds and we have swimmers and things in there. Um, it's a concern, right? And that's yeah. a, sure if there was a lifeguard or the, the people were down at the town beach, they would say, hey, whatever. I have a call in the deal about I'm not that sure too. That they would. And the, the, the town, the lifeguards would only, only address that area within their swimming area. Yeah, I mean, there's illegal parking all the time on the driveway, and a ton of people swimming there. So, yeah, they're 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 focused on their their area with their specific hours, and that's it. Yeah, and when they leave, and when they leave, some people leave, but a lot of people stay, and you know, it's light out till eight thirty or nine, you know, earlier in the summer, and people stay and continue to swim. <laughs> So should that question be, are the town, are the people management efforts at the town beach appropriate for all seasons of the year? No, I just, I think the way it is, is fine. Because it is a, and, and, you know, it's because it's not, it's seasons of the year. It's the weekends versus weekdays. It's the hours. It's, it's, you know, it's, I mean, the season, the season goes, you know, the, the season ended for the lifeguards like August, mid-August. And there 24. were lots of hot days after that. So it, so if you saw this survey, Alyssa, you would answer this as in general year round. I automatically yeah. thought just during season. That's just me. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. I, I'm just saying, because that's how I saw it. So 
we got to make sure our questions are clear. Okay. So mm -hmm. anybody else have comments on those two? Do we all like them? I would, I would prefer it to, to be specific about the cove because I think most people know, they may not know what we're talking about by the town conservation land because we're really talking about the cove. I've got no problem with that. John, any comment on you? No comment. Okay. All right. Uh, let's let's change it to that. Then we got the cove. So uh, are the people management efforts of the town conservation land just like comma, including the cove? No, I think what Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, it's Asham's Cove is really how you want that to be worded, right? Or uh, Alyssa's suggestion is uh, okay to town conservation land and, you know, including the cove would, would work so that people know what we're talking about. Okay. Shannon, can you scroll up to six and seven, please? Can you see them? Yeah, I'm just reading them. Thanks. So I think probably some combination or some point is important there because communication from the town or one of our recommendations are we're gonna keep a task force in place or an advisory committee. If communication has been unsuccessful, it might be a recommendation for the future. Maybe there's a way to reword this. What question are you on? Six and seven. Has the communication, because we have a number of um, inputs when we've talked to people from our action items that it seems like there is could be better communication. So about, about about the pond about like um anna for example mentioned to carl that she thought there could be a better website in place informing people about the pond and a, a central res repository for information about the pond is it been good enough for people to it has been good enough. If somebody in the town, you know, one of the town employees mentioned that that could be beefed up. I'm wondering if the survey would also tell us people who live in the community would also want a place or a better communication uh, receptacle that they can learn more. So the question that was written by somebody was, have you tried to raise issues to the town about anything, right? Can we swim at the? Can we swim in the cove? Can we swim at the beach? Uh, did the town respond to it? Do they know what's going on? I don't really know. I'm just thinking: should we ask the community about the oversight of the town and communication about the pond? So, is that a separate question? No, Alyssa. What I'm asking you all to participate in is: Shannon made a comment. Could six and seven be combined? And I'm actually talking about that right now. Is it one question we can reframe? I think we definitely should ask them if they would like a better website or a better, you know, access to information about White Pond, because it is confusing now. There's a couple, you know, there's Friends of White Pond, there's the old White Pond uh, committee, you know, you were on Beth. Um, and, you know, so that does make sense. Would you like an easier access? Would you like a central access or, you know, whatever terms we want to use to get information about White Pond? I don't know if that answers your question, Beth. But yeah, I would definitely think we should improve that. But, yeah. you know, we can ask them. They may, they may or may not think of that issue. 
to but, your I know I'm being but but isn't that a different question than than what six and seven are both asking? I think so. It's a good question. Well, we could just add to it, you know, on six at would would a website be a good solution for you to escalate, you know, observations or issues? Or, or are you getting to be more general? What would be the best way to issue them? You know, get those issues or observations escalated. I, I, we need some, sorry guys, I, I don't know what to say here, but if we want to come up with a survey and we're going to have to get it soon, we need to agree on what some questions should be. So let's agree what what we want here. Um, these were questions put, you know, put forth by our task force members that they thought were important. And so we need some feedback. What do we want to ask? We've just agreed we have a new header. We have a new couple of first questions. What else do we want to know? Do you want to I think, keep? Go I ahead. think that question four, um, which asks, you know, what are your concerns of, about White Pond? And one of the things that you could check off is illegal behavior, lack of enforcement. Um, so that could be thought of to take the place of number five. Because it allows a person to say that they're they're concerned about the illegal behavior and lack of enforcement, um, which was which is phrased as negative behaviors and challenges. Um, although number five is asking, I get sorry, it's not exactly the same. Like what specific number five is more specific about what are the negative behaviors. Um, but the feedback we got from Shannon is that if we ask that, we should add a question that also says, what about positive behaviors? So that we're not directing the survey taker to only have negative um, feedback. Um, um, I think if you ask about positive, and this is also for negative, it, it, it's an open-ended question. And will people answer? You know, that would be just really a comment. That's more people have to answer something because we don't want to feed them the information, right? Because maybe we'll learn something. So if we put it in there, maybe that is... I just know open-ended questions are a problem for surveys because most people don't want to take the time. But it's important to know, I guess, what's worked, what hasn't. Well, maybe we, at the end, have, as you as you suggested earlier, uh, any other feedback you have, and, and then the person has you know, however many characters to uh, put in their main concerns, uh, you know, positive or negative, you know, I, I, um, so maybe we get rid of five and in its place have a please list any other um, comments or concerns or just comments you, you may have that you would like us to take into account. Because that that could also take the place of number six. Yeah. True. Then they could say, "Well, I tried doing this," or blah blah blah. Okay. Right. I, you know, I've called the police this many times about, about this issue, and nothing has been resolved. Uh, or, you know, I I really enjoyed my membership this summer, and I, you know, I think it's a great resource. So. It, it's leave, it gives people an opportunity to comment on things we hadn't even thought of. Um, so I guess yeah. I would vote for 
striking five and six and adding a comment box at the end. I'm good with that. Okay. Do we want to keep three? I mean, it's a no brainer, but I think everybody will check off everything, most everything, but you know. So do we want it? Is it just noise? I think it's gotta be there. Well, three is the positive and four is the negative, right? You're asking, we're asking for positive what people like about it. And then number four would be what what concerns uh, people have. Yeah, you know, and four, we ought to add like a lack of access as a possible concern. And it, that's what I, I've heard is that uh, like on Labor Day, it was after the season, so we weren't allowed to swim. It was a hot day. There were 100 mm -hmm. people down there. You know, obviously those 100 people uh, wanted to swim, and you know, they were there doing it. So they might have a concern that there's a lack of access. And so yeah, I think that I, should be one of the things we I'm put okay, in. There. I'm okay adding that as, as a, uh, yeah. a checkbox. I mean, why they make this season so short? I don't know. You know, like cuts it off the twenty fourth of August. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of hot days after that. You know. Yeah, I think John, that's the the, the real question, right? Because lack of access wasn't a problem because there were hundreds of people swimming. But well, it is, why it's, isn't it's, it still it's, open? I mean, there's a sign up there that says no swimming. You know. Yeah, but people were swimming, right? But your point is, why is the season so short? So that's actually. No, I think, I think there people. Some people will take that as I. I won't go there because you know some people will go there. So I think, I think people are very concerned about lack of access that more people. Yeah, I mean, like my, my daughter there. said, you know, should I should I take my my two year old son, her two year old son, to the pond on on Labor Day? And I said, well, it's closed, but uh, to hell with it, just go. Well, I mean, you know. To the average person, it's like it says it's closed. It says no swimming. You know, they don't know why it says no swimming. It might, for all they know, it might be contaminated or something. I think it is an issue. I agree. Well, they're closed now because they don't have labor. They don't have kids. Kids are going back to school. That's why it's closed. Well, so it you could want still to continue. be open to swimming. It could still be open to swimming. I mean, when Walden doesn't have lifeguards, it's still open to swimming. They just say swim at your own risk. They take in all the, uh, the, uh, you know, floats and all that. It's all removed. But people, they're still like, it's still packed. But I don't see why white says you can't swim. But anyway, we could ask if You're people have about... access as a problem. You're talking about the town beach, not Sage, Sage, Sage and Code, right? Well, just right. general. I think if you say lack of access, and then people can decide where they're going to illegal, you know. Some people won't go to Sage and Cove because they, it's frowned upon. Um, some people won't go to the town beach because it's frowned upon. And so they'll feel like they can't access the pond. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe, maybe we we add um you know limited limited hours um limited open hours of the beach mm, or limited you know length of the season yeah but it's evenings too i mean it's there's lots of you know time right i mean i you know get home Sometimes I'll get there about six o'clock after work and, you know, I won't want to get out of the water at seven. I would love it if it were open a little later. Um, but to get back to question number four, what is the best way to describe that in a survey? Limited hours of the town beach? 
Yeah, I think that hours no, at a time. Limited hours one. and season. Limited and and hours length of season, season are two different things. They should both be in there. Okay, so, right, so, so what are the two we're saying? Um, can you both say those again? Uh, General question is access. So uh, what are your con uh, main concerns about White Pond? And one could be um, access, you know, dash, dash, uh, limited hours, limited season or something. One question or two? One. Okay. All right. I think that's good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So now if we retool this, you kind of have the new intro that Alyssa said she'll write. We'll have questions one question two did we agree we're keeping it or no i thought we thought we were going to keep it but just end that at are you aware that white pond has in the past two years successfully reduced algal blooms Oh, that works. We're going to keep number three is what you all agreed on. Number four with the additional talks about the additional bullet about access. Yes. We're going to basically retool. Um, do we put our common question? Jennifer, you were talking about the common question. Do we put it there or at the end? It kind of follows number seven. I think it should go at the end. Okay. All right. So we so we've gotten rid of five and six. We're keeping seven, and then have a comment after that. Um. And then I thought we agreed that we were going to retool yeah. eight yeah. to use Donna's totally. yeah. framing. Did we and say we're keeping? Yeah, did we say we're keeping seven though? Go back up a little, Shannon, please. Do we want seven? I think that's really important. And I actually, it's, I don't know if people would understand it, but I think what we have to ask them is if they're the overseer of White Pond and the White Pond watershed, because that's really what our charge is, is not just the pond itself, but um, the whole White Pond watershed. So expand the question to be is the town been an effective overseer of the white pond and the, of white pond and a white pond watershed? Yeah, if that's if that's a question you think people if that terminology is something you think people would understand. You know. And then we have um number. Uh, Donna's thing. Can you scroll up a little, Shannon? Sorry. Or down, sorry, down. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's going to be about probably eight questions. So we'll retool it yep. slightly. And then Shannon... What was the thought? Are we, you know, in your email, you said, would we be sending it to other town committees or are we sending this to the public or putting it on the website? Where will it go? It would be just about all of those. It can go on the town website. So Donna would help with that. Um, I have email listings for boards and committee chairs and, you know, could either ask them or I could pull out a list of just as many board and committee members that we have in our database to send the uh, the survey to. Um, but yeah, Donna would 
be able to get it on the website just on like a, a general news and notice post as well. And right. so for the average person, you know, that goes to the people we've already been talking to, a lot of the committees, but how does it get to the general population? We have to assume they go to the town website periodically? Yeah, so if Donna does a news and notice, whoever, through news and notices, residents um, subscribe to that. So uh, there would be a, a good handful of residents that subscribe to that feature of the website and would um, see the notice via email that way. But otherwise, yes. Just hope we get some some other traffic on the website. Do you probably know the answer better than me? I know I subscribe to various um, news and notices right, by White Pond Task Force, for instance. Is there a general one that we see? I mean, yes, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so you have, to re you have to be already interested enough to have that as one of your mechanisms of communication. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And maybe and then, it could be posted on the White Pond, Friends of White Pond website. Um, I can ask the uh, person who manages it. It's not a bad idea. Just and I also know we have a Facebook page. You know, uh, yeah. I, on, I actually, I think it'd be link. better. I think it'd be better to have on the Freds of White Pond a link to the survey rather than, um, you know. Oh yeah, that's. I think that's what you mean. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah. Just totally you know, notifying people that feedback is being requested and a link to how they can participate. Okay. And then Shannon, the final thing is then surveys come in. What happens then? Would they send them to us and we look at them or does a uh, survey or chimp monkey, whatever it is, do some of the first analytics? Um, I would say depending on the, uh, the format of the survey questions, it probably does do some um, baseline analytics at first for you guys. Um, but then, yeah, we would have to coordinate with Donna. Okay. All right. So that's important for the comment section will be the one that you have to really go through, but the other ones, right. if we can make it the multiple choice in the yes, no, then it's a lot yeah. easier. Okay. All right. So we need to get this going, you know, yesterday. <laughs> so do you want to, Alyssa, you said you take a stab at the intro. Uh, how much time do you need? A week. Okay. Um, anybody else want to take a stab after the intro is done to kind of rephrase what we just talked about? Rephrase the questions. What we just kind of went through, right? We're going to have one, two, you know, just what we looked at. Shannon's going to send this to us and then just kind of reformat it based on our discussion tonight. Um, so, sure. So, so I would rewrite the questions and Alyssa is going to rewrite the introduction. Alyssa is going to do the introduction. Jennifer, you can take, if you can take a stab, you know, what we just talked about and I took notes and then yeah. send it to me. I can kind of do another, like how we've done our minutes in the past, the red line, and then sure. we can send it to Shannon so it's cleaned up. How about that? I I'm, can do that. So we need the intro. I'm um, out of town on next week working, but I can work at night. So um, whenever you and I can coordinate through email. Okay. okay. And then Shannon, so what we're trying to say is an action item. We're going to try to give you a deliverable hopefully within like 10 days or something so we can get this going. Okay, sounds good. Does everybody agree with that uh, process? Sure. I know Carly, I know Carly, you don't like surveys, but I mean- No, I, I, again, I don't want to be obstructive. Sounds good. No, 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 you're not. I'm chair, I'm chair leader from the side, it's good. Okay, good. Okay. This is Linda again, may I comment? Please. So um, I'm wondering, also, at some point when you do have the um, final survey that you're all comfortable with, whether you notify the town reporter in the bridge, and sometimes she'll either do another article on 
or she'll incorporate it in something she's writing? Oh, like, um, yeah, a couple of things have been in the past when we had John Higgins go talk. So like Ann O'Connor or somebody say, to, you mean to get the message out that there's a survey? Yeah, or, or Marston, I uh, forget her first name, um, yeah. is reporting on town issues. Yeah. From Both the of bridge. them have, uh, actually, yeah. Okay, no, that's a good idea. Okay, so another action item is uh, let the bridge know we're trying to do a data collection. I don't know if that would go in opinions, but go somewhere in um, the Friends of White Pond. And there's another site, uh, Preserve White Pond, but once they see it on the Facebook or Friends, I'm sure they'll just grab it. Okay, all right. So what, but first we'll need the link to even we have to get the survey out and the actual living link so people can do that. So, all right. So then Shannon will uh, we'll rely on you on the getting us that, that link. Yep. And, and I know you, you want to leave. So I think we spent a lot of time on this. So thank you. Yeah, for, no problem. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. All right. Thanks guys. Shannon, can you, now do I have to share my screen again or do, do you revert it back to me? Um, I think for you to get the agenda pulled back up, you would need to uh, share your screen again. I stopped. Got it. Okay, perfect. Thanks, right. Shannon. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Um, Carl, one of the action items was to discuss information that he uh, he had a meeting with Steve Verrill. And, you know, Steve Verrill did confirm that he does use uh, pesticides. So as we had talked about the past uh, two fertilizer. Fertilizer, fertilizer. Fertilizer, sorry. Fertilizer, yep. yeah. Yep. And then Carl had some other, um, he talked to him about a couple other things, Carl. So maybe. Yeah, so he, he, he's a great guy. We spent like two hours ago talking about everything. But he um, he does fertilize. They inject the fertilizer with the seed as it's planted or the plants as they're planted. He does rotate crops, variety of crops there like most farmers do um he does test have it tested every second year and they will lime as needed um he did say they use less lime than they used to due to less acid rain and i asked him if he could hay the fields instead of you know vegetables and stuff and he said he there's no need for hay anymore because they don't have cows anymore so that's not an option for him um the only other thing, and this is anecdotal, he said that you know he didn't see any overflow any to the pond directly because there's a berm or whatever. There's you know it doesn't. There's no water that flows from the fields to the pond directly. Now, obviously, you can go through the ground and stuff, but it, there's no like overflow, if you will, in a severe rain through the pond. But that was about it. So, any questions on that? No, I'll just add that I once talked to uh, Delia Kay about uh, Farrell's use of the fields up above, and she said, you know, they had considered the impact of fertilizers there and decided that, you know, just, you know, given the location and the distance from the pond, that it wouldn't be a contributing factor. So that's why they didn't restrict, you know, the usage at all. Yeah. I mean, that was encouraging that, you know, he wants to limit the fertilizer, probably whatever the motivation could be financial to just the injection next to the seed or the plant that's being planted. But so it's not broadcast across all the fields, but it is, there is still fertilizer going on. That's about it. Okay, thanks, Carl. So the couple of fields we, you were talking about that he, there was one that he did hay that was the one on the corner of powder mill. I guess, I guess he's not. I, I mean, he's saying they don't do hay at all anymore because there's yeah. no need know, for it. Yeah. Do you okay. know what kind of fertilizer he's using? What's in the fertilizer? I don't know. I mean, you know, the usual potassium, uh, potash, and uh, nitrogen, but it it probably based on what what plant they're using, what they mix it. You know, different percentages is what typically the farmers do. You know, with what crop they're growing. So then there's really no recommendations we can do about that. Well, I mean, we could, we could ask him to stop, but he's going to say, do you like to eat? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, somebody's, well, somebody's got to grow food. 
Um, I mean, the, the question is whether it impacts the pond. I mean, if it doesn't, what difference does it make to us? Yeah, I defer. You guys have more expertise than I do. I, I don't know if uh, fertilizer goes into the water table and to, to contaminate the pond. How did they determine that, Alyssa? Do you know? Well, when we looked at the phosphorus loading, I mean, we have, you know, I don't think we know, know that it has the answer, but when you looked at the uh, ESS report and the poured water data, it didn't seem to indicate um, a significant contribution of phosphorus to the pond. That was aimed more at um, septic systems. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head where those samples were taken, whether they would be um, capturing the, you know, you know, it wouldn't be runoff from from those fields because they don't run off that direction, but whether it would be through uh, groundwater transport. So I don't know. I, I just know that um, it's it's pretty far away. Um, I know earlier, John, you know, you can address this more. John had saying, you know, if you're sort of more than septic systems, more than 40 feet away, the phosphorus isn't going to go into the pond. Well, this, those fields are definitely more than 40 feet away. I don't know, John, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I, I sort of agree. I, you know, I've been um, wondering why there wasn't bacteria bloom this year and you know of course you could point to the apods but to tell you the truth i don't think that that would stop a bloom it might scoop up a bloom after it started so i've been wondering what is going on because i thought that with as much rain as we got this year surely we'd have trouble uh rain would push everything would make the groundwater go through faster we increase uh runoff uh, it's just a bad thing. And we didn't have the problem with cyanobacteria this year. So now I think that what really caused the problem in the past was the um, all of the construction work that was done at the town beach. And, you know, because in doing that, we kind of dug up the old septic systems and they landscaped it. They used fertilizer to start the grass, uh, you sprayed on grass stuff and, um, you know, cut down the trees, disturb the soils. I kind of think that might have been the cause of the cyanobacteria bloom that we had. And now that's all kind of washed away as much as it's going to. And it wasn't a problem this year. I think that Going on a limb, I say, I think we might be over and that uh, White Pond isn't going to have trouble in the future. So I'm much less an advocate than I had been of, you know, we got to do something about the septic systems. We got to do something about the fertilizer. I don't know. I think maybe um, the, uh, we're lucky that the soils around there don't really let phosphorus move much. Um, and uh you know so that that's kind of where i'm at right now well, beth you said there was there were blooms they're just a lot smaller this year or, yeah right? yeah um well, you know you, there's a report of bloom and you can still report them um and john has you know collected some and you know he knows he, he reports to the town if you look at the report they actually identify what phase they're in or what type. So that's actually posted where on the Board of Health site. So yeah, there have been nothing like before. And it was early I, on too, wasn't it? No, no, uh, there's been some more recently, but not nothing dangerous. It never caused, you know, how the green, you know, and red type of um, warning, nothing that was bad enough to, um, to, you know, say you can't swim, right? Yeah, so there's, you know, there's naturally cyanotoxins in the water. So, I mean, right. they're always there. It's the question of whether they, you know, accumulate to a quantity concentration that's significant and it has been insignificant. They've done, um, there was a, you know, enough concern that they actually did the cyano test because those those tests cost more money. And so they've, they've done those a few times. Um, 
and then um, Jen, just uh, when you were talking about the beach, you know, the project and maybe your thoughts of that, I know people were concerned about that in the sand and the trees, everything you just said. We, you know, in 2015, remember the pond was closed. I wasn't living here then for the entire season too. So, but that might've been hopefully mitigated but part of that ESS work that was done on the erosion on the hills. So yeah, lots of things. So I know that daily in the past two, they had these little um, brochures and we actually tried to, you know, educate people and send them about fertilizers at homes because there's the butters too, who probably fertilize grass and stuff. But if we're saying that's not that huge of a concern, then I, I, I think it's a concern in general, all of us should be aware, right? About the use of fertilizers, but not that we're gonna make a recommendation about it. We can well, continue we to educate continue. people, continue to educate people about the use yeah. of fertilizer in their homes, because obviously things do go into the aquifer. And I think Delia's, you know, already, tries to do that and I know that yeah this I mean she's got that very nice brochure which I think goes out to new homeowners and maybe it should be handed out yeah we I know the White Pond Advisor Committee distributed to all the neighbor you know the neighborhoods uh the last year we had she copied a couple hundred copies for us so okay all right thanks Carl for uh talking to Steve appreciate it I talked, uh, Evan's been kind of absent for the past couple months um I did remind him of this action item about uh, collecting information from the DPOA members. Apparently he's hoping that the the association, the current president or chair, whatever you say, will send a, a, a kind of like an overview. And if he gets that, then he'll share it with us. What, what is DPOA? That's the Dover Properties Association. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yep, so yep. that's that whole okay. big neighborhood, right? And they yep. have a beach that... Um, the town actually does do the, the E. coli testing for their beach. And I know that they're also working on um, some erosion of their stairs. They're trying to collect money to, to put the stairs together. And that was a group of people who are pretty active and friends and who were doing water collection and things like yep. that. Uh, no, I know that water just in those, the, yeah. Yeah, Dover so Street, yeah. It was just one more group of a survey. So if we get some information from them, um, we'll get it. I can't guarantee it will happen. Okay, but so, you said pesticides. I just I, I didn't. I did ask him if he uses pesticides. Steve Errol, and that he does not. And the, that's unusual. A lot of people use these Roundup Ready corns and ver various vegetables. He did, he says Concord people would be all over him, so he doesn't do that. Just so you know. It's interesting because he calls it integrated. Um, pest I, you management. know, the, he calls yeah, it that <laughs> name. <laughs> well, integrated pest management doesn't mean for pesticides. Yeah, but. Fertilizers was what we were talking about. So, okay, but that's fine. Yeah, but yeah, you mentioned pesticides uh, because I asked him because my, my buddy does that all the time. But he, uh, a farmer, but he doesn't. He says people in Concord would be all over him. <laughs> He's probably and right about of, that. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's not much availability to, you know, do uh, uh, crops on these hills because most of the, uh, the butters are kind of on a hill, so it's hard to plant. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so um, we're back to the recommendations. We agreed, as I mentioned earlier, on two of the recommendations, and Carl's been keeping an Excel table of those recommendations. And um, is there any other, based so on what we've talked about today? Could you, just, is, could you just summarize with those two recommendations? Yeah, the two were that we are going to recommend that the APOD, use of the APOD will continue as a maintenance even, or a preventive maintenance measure. And the other was that we agreed that we would like, I don't know if we would use the word dedicated ranger by the Cove area as opposed to, and and there on the weekends especially, I think uh, it was, you know, the weekends were really the important time. Not yeah, I know I wasn't here last week, but I would, I would not, um, condone that as a recommendation. For one thing, I think a dedicated ranger sort of defeats the purpose of, you know, when you have someone that's there intermittently, and I think the ranger program has been very successful from what I've heard. So, uh, you know, it's like the reason we have statistics, you don't have to have someone 100% there all the time, um, but someone intermittently uh, doing that, that job 
Um, yeah, I agree with you, uh, so I, I don't think it's worth putting anything more into it than than we've already got. Um, no, there's really nothing wrong with uh, with swimming from that area. Uh, so it's kind of an unenforceable, I would say, uh, mandate anyway. What but is there is something thing? there is something wrong, and and the Natural Resources Department has signage saying that there's no I mean, swimming. You know, I think. What no you're, dogs. You're, 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 I mean, I, I, that's, I have a fundamental question about whether it's okay to swim in the pond or not. I mean, we don't know whether carrying capacity of the pond, we know that the beach can have up to, what is it, five or 600 people. So what is a handful? 400, 400 is the limit they put on the beach. 400. So what is a handful of people swimming? And there's people at, at all the residences. So why, why are, I don't understand why we're, prohibiting people from swimming from the town land. We're encouraging them to use the trails. So we want them to use the trails and it's okay for them to sit on the beach if there is a beach there. So why can't they swim? What's what's the problem with it? Well, I think- I asked comes... Delia that question and she said, the animals have to have some place, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't really think that uh, the, uh, NRC has got a good reason to keep people out of there. However, if it becomes known that you can go there and swim at no cost, um, the place will probably be mobbed. Well, so, yeah, I mean, that was I, I had been there when it was mobbed. There were hundreds of people. At, especially at if, uh, you know, when, when uh, the bike path gets finished out there and the new construction happens. So I think that the current situation where we say that you can't swim, we have a ranger there that sort of moves through once in a while and uh, tells people not to swim when she sees them. And click, you know, collects, you know, picks up after them, basically. I mean, that's one of the, the big problems. Swimming isn't really going to hurt the pond, but throwing trash around does. The ranger coming there intermittently can pick up the trash. That's what the rangers. The rangers' role is not to pick up trash. I yeah, think it is. Part, I think it that's is, what is part of what she does. Yeah. I think Alyssa said that she does do that. Yeah. I, but, but I can just tell you, and you can talk to a lot of people who pick up and bring garbage all the time. And the ranger has, according to Jane Prentice, who's the steward now, you know, fourteen other properties that she is having to visit. And we talked about the weekends when it's really hot, you know, I don't know if it's, she has a choice Saturday or Sunday, but there's a lot of trash. There's a lot of people swimming in the water and there's no restroom facilities. And so that right there would be, you know, an issue, at least the beach, there is restroom facilities. No, the beach doesn't have restroom facilities, except during the hours that it's open. That's what, that's what I, I'm talking about, John. Yes, that, that's a different yeah. subject. But this cove in general, with the no swimming, I think those are all factors, you know, about that, because there is no trash receptacles. The town's not interested in putting one there is what we've been told. We could make a recommendation that that happen, but um, they ha not having a restaurant facility and people with nowhere to go, you you know what's happening. Yeah, I don't know. Every, I mean, I, I'm not there at the pond a lot, but I don't see a lot of trash there. I mean, I see it. I mean, I think things have changed maybe over time. So I think, Alyssa, I would absolutely have to argue with you on that because we walk our dog there probably four times a day in the cove and other neighbors do. And I could ask Jane to come and attend. I think that trash is a problem. I don't know what that's people management, right? And also if you're swimming and you're, you know, using the pond as your bathroom, it's a problem. Well, but so, but everybody else is from the beach and and the residents. No, I don't think they should be people. Who and, and, I'm not, have, and I, they, you know, I, I don't. They're know not throwing much. garbage in. If there's a hundred people in the cove, when, on when a weekend, has there been a hundred people in the cove? Abso this year? Absolutely, this heat. Right. Absolutely. There, there's also a lot of people at the end of the, the state highway, the road there. By the way. Which yeah. I happen to be one of them, um, but I go down there, and uh, at times there are fifty people there. You know, not in, at the uh, 
Town Beach, but at the end of the driveway, you just boom. So that's maybe not as big a problem as the code, but that is a lot of folks too. Yeah, and I know the ranger doesn't feel that you know she has any enforcement um, because it's it's not town land. Does she say that there's uh, trash around? No, I don't know. I mean, I, I really got a different feeling from Dean, talking to being with Deanna. She, you know, she picks up trash, of which there's some, and illegal rope swing occasionally, and occasionally leftover wood from bond, illegal bonfires. I mean, it's not pristine, but, um, you know, it's, it's man I mean, manageable at this point is sort of what she thought. I mean, that, I think it's a good question to, to ask her, like, do you think that there needs to be more enforcement? You know, it's, it's her job. She would know, I would think, perhaps yeah. better than anyone. I mean, I what think kind I of do. enforcement? Are you talking about enforcement to, to have people get out of the pond? What enforcement are you mentioning here? No, I mean, like if longer hours uh, or, you know, um, or more days. Does she think that, you know, that's really an issue or does she think she has it under control? Yeah, well, she has it under control when she's there, except that, as Alyssa uh, mentioned a couple of meetings ago, one of the things she said, she's asked people to get out of the pond and they look at her and continue to stay in the pond. So, yeah. and is that, a, you know, is that a problem not, if a handful of people do that? Is that, is that a problem? Uh, if that's one of her, one of her responsibilities to ask people to get out of the pond, yeah. And she doesn't enforce it. I don't know. Yeah. But I can tell you, you can't, we cannot just uh, think that the ranger who's covering 14 properties and how many hours she's there and on what days is an indication of what is happening all the time. And that's something we have to be careful of. Well, because if you ask the residents who do live here, there's a lot of stuff that's picked up. You know, there's. Well, I, think, a, a, I, mean, I think it's great. I think it's, a, I think it's great that they're stewards, and I think it's great that the residents and the yeah. people who use those properties yeah. pick up all the time. And I think it's being managed because of that. So I, I think if I have to pick up twelve beer cans and cigarette butts, there needs to be something that kind of is a people management plan in place that kind of prevents that from happening. People should bring in their stuff and bring out. But if you're illegal drinking, you're probably not going to want to do that for a number of reasons. And um, it's just a lot of times, unfortunately, human nature, right? I think the safety issue is another concern. If something ever happened to anybody, those rope swings, are, you know, I know people were concerned about that. Um, I, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not pristine. And she may see it and pick up stuff. And on some days, it's better than others. That's for sure. Well, do well, you think that there's a problem? I wouldn't, with... I wouldn't support a recommendation of having a full time dedicated ranger. Aside from the cost of doing that to the town, I mean, when you talk about relative costs for preserving White Pond, is that a worthwhile one? Actually, what we did say was not a full time. We said to have somebody manning there on the weekend days. Yeah. Well, isn't she there on one weekend day? One. She's there yeah and and remember john again she's covering as jane indicated to me because jane talks to her all the time she's covering you know number of properties so honestly i don't know Alyssa, in your discussion with her how many hours she puts here at white pond but she her job is to do you know for all the overseer of all these places yeah beth do you think there's a problem with people walking their dogs in that area no, no, I think that um, I know one of the concerns Delia had mentioned early on was that they didn't want the dog swimming in the area, probably for the same reason they, you know, <laughs> if they're if they're defecating or urinating in the water, just like people concern. But I know the dogs have always been an issue and it's signed that way, right? What about dogs yep. um, urinating or defecating on the land, but near? Well, they give, that's why they have those, um, you know, those pup mitts and stuff, right? They're encouraging people to use those. Yeah. You know, actually, it's interesting at the beach, the White Pond Beach regulation says the dog is allowed out over after season and after hours. So the oh, really? department um, ah. is not prohibiting, not helping with uh, keeping dogs out of the pond. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. 
Did they say they have I, to be unleashed? I would think the hazard. I think the the uh, nutrients from dogs would, you know, probably be greater than the nutrients input by swimmers. I mean, there aren't any dog, uh, you know, porta potties either. So dog poop yeah. has a tremendous amount of phosphorus in it. If you pick it up, then it's not a problem, but it, it is. I mean, dog pee has a fair amount of nitrogen in it, but that doesn't seem to be a problem. Then phosphorus. Mostly nitrogen in the pee. Yeah, but actually I thought that was a, when I was, I saw that sign at the rec, at the, the beach, I was really surprised because I saw, I mean, a lot of people are come to White Pond to let their dog swim. Yeah, it's interesting because I think it says also on other all the other trails, right, that they have to be on a leash. Um, that doesn't mean they won't go swimming, but they're supposed to be on a leash, and, right? Huh. No, I have to go look at that sign. That's interesting. Um, well, I don't know what to say. I, I, we made that recommendation with the people who were at the meeting last time. I, I, are we going to now say that's not a recommendation? I, I think, think we should. Uh, I think for the the other uh, recommendation, the one about the iPod. So didn't John uh, say that he wasn't going to do it anymore? It wasn't necessary to do it uh, another season. No. I don't know, but I was at the conservation coffee this morning and Delia says she's putting funds in her budget for the town to actually purchase two small pods and to have uh, John Higgins uh, do a annual maintenance contract. So yeah. she's putting that those funds in for next year, at least, which seems like a, a good strategy. I think she, um, you know, they were, you know, with our budget, the town budget, of course, and if there's ever going to be an override and taxes are increasing, you know, it should be our recommendation that we keep it because there might be, as she had mentioned too, that maybe it would have to be a CPA as opposed to, you know, in the budget, which it still goes in the budget, but it's just a different bucket, right? Um, so I think we should keep it in there. I'm glad that they're you. doing it. I think that having it as a maintenance mode, it's, you know, in these sentient pods is what they're talking about for the future. But um, yeah, I think we we talked about this last time, John, I, I don't know if you were at the meeting i thought you were that we would I recommend was. that it, we recommend we we said last time we would recommend that it continues its use yeah, I, thought the two, I thought the two recommendations were for the apod and for support of uh, the comprehensive wastewater management plan no well we did support that we did Last, last month, we took a vote, the task force members who were at the meeting took a vote on the ones that we wanted to put on paper. Um, Carl's keeping the list. There's a bunch of other ideas there too. Uh, but what we voted on last month was those two that I just mentioned. There's right. about well, seven I would say that we, in our final report that uh, it was not a unanimous decision and then there's- um, I think you're right. I don't agree. Yeah. I, th I, I don't know. Um, and I'm Linda, maybe you, if you're still on, I don't know if you're still on the phone. I don't know if you need a unanimous decision. I don't think we have those rules of engagement and I'm not saying we're going to do it or not. I'm just saying we can't keep going back and redoing things because we've got to get some deliverables out here. Well, I'd say that, but that was a very major decision to, that was made um, that, I, that I'm very uncomfortable with. I guess I don't understand. What what are you uncomfortable with? You don't you feel that anybody at any time should that be able to swim that anywhere? That, that, that to have a full time, they have a dedicated ranger there for three eight hour days on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday yeah. um, throughout a certain time period. I, I I don't think is the right approach to um, people. So you want as many time. people as and at any time swimming there, regardless. Oh, Carl, that's don't not, disagree that's with not the idea of the rangers the, stopping by. Well, what are you, what are you saying then? So I think the way it's working now is working with having a ranger stop by intermittently, um, continuing to do outreach with people there, continuing to pick up trash that's there, continuing to take down rope swings, continuing to take boats that are in and um, illegally stored there. Who lives there? They're not picking up the trash. 
the residents. I don't know. Deanna said they were. And there are and hundreds of people there. Any. So, I mean, so Diana's picking up trash. The stewards are picking up trash. The residents in the area are picking up trash. And I think it's working. Okay. If, if we're okay with several hundred people being there more than the, the beach, then okay. I'm, I'm not. I'm not it's either. Much load. It's not. It's not. Uh, not good for the pond. I mean, the pond got by this year, and it's there's there's no load associated with people being in the water, particularly. Well, we just discussed that there's an increase, and there could be an increase with increase loads in because of. The just what we talked about for the past 10 minutes. So, Increasing how can you say there's not a load? Human waste, yeah, yeah. Everyone's going to be peeing in the pond, there's no bathroom over there. Well, you know, I, I don't know that they are. Um, yeah, that's you know, nobody really knows what the deal is on that. People, um. Uh, You know clearly what's happened this year uh we got by okay and it was a it was a you know probably a stressed year so i don't see that uh we need to restrict the people any more than we need to say well you know what everyone needs to put in very uh a better septic system i mean you know uh whatever is up with the septic systems we're getting by Whatever's up with with the people swimming, we're getting by. Right? I think we're getting by because there's been some significant effort, which we just discussed. And the effort includes the utilization of the APOD. The effort includes the stormwater drain off from the beach. The effort includes previous erosion efforts. There's lots of things, including people management, which is the hardest thing to control we're all aware of. And if you want to take a proactive approach, you don't wait for things to just get bad. So things are okay. If we're going to use, continue to advise the use of the APOD and it's not the big ones, the three big ones that it has been, and it's more maintenance mode, just, just the pressures on the pond, we should be thinking of, in my opinion, doing anything we can to help. And to just say, we shouldn't consider that is a problem for me. I mean, I would say, you know, you could put in a, a few porta potties if you're absolutely convinced that that's the, the issue. Um, they're not, they're not going to, that would we're be not a seeing the phosphor. We're not seeing the phosphorus levels in the pond. So it's, it's we're not getting the, um, the flux from that source. You're right, the nutrient, Alyssa. The nutrient levels in the pond are, are very low. But I think the best point, there's multiple factors here, right? And you don't start slipping on a couple of factors and hope for the best. You continue. Alyssa's saying better. there aren't multiple factors. In fact, you know, things are in pretty good condition. So I, I'm just trying to understand. You feel there should be a free-for-all of anybody, anyone? No, I, I'm just saying that I think uh, having a Full time. I mean, having someone there all the time is 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 unnecessary and not in a good way of dedicating our pound funds. I think having an intermittent ranger there at times um, is working and should be continued. And Beth is saying it's not working. It's dependent on people picking up trash. And... That's what I mean. The uh, the people who own the land seem to think it was working. Um, Deanna, who was out there, seemed to think it was working. You know, you asked me to talk to the ranger. She went out there. Alyssa, said, Alyssa, I working. have to interrupt. I'm sorry. Deanna is there how many hours a week? I, it's not a point to argue, but what are the facts? Deanna, if she's picking up trash, for how many hours a week is she here? She's covering 14 properties. So she can't see it all. She can't see when she moves that 60 people jump in the in the water. I, I'm just saying that you're basing the talk about trash on 
a point of time that this person is here. And that is great. If the residents around don't continue to pick up the trash, and it might get ticked off that they don't, but nobody would because we're all, you know, environmental stewards. It, it, it you know, it's, it's putting, it, like we take trash and sometimes we put it at the barrel that's down by that fishing men's area, area that Carl was talking about. I don't know if that bin will stay there all year because, you know, you have to haul it back to your house. We're talking, you know, we're talking a lot of stuff, not just cans, not just cigarette butts. People have found diapers, uh, you know, defec defecation. It's, it's, it's not, it's not pristine and that can't be helpful. And so if we want to make a recommendation that Sachem's Cove becomes a swimming area, then it's going to have to be controlled in a different way where there are things and an infrastructure to bring in trash to have porta potties. And do we want that? Wouldn't it be better if everybody did go to the beach and pay the money and that gets to the town's coffers and it keeps that area clean and safe and also, I mean, a liability as far as somebody drinking and drowning? I, I just think that it's the wrong message and i think having a ranger there on some of these days maybe maybe it's not full time friday saturday and sunday maybe it's that the ranger has more time at sachem's cove on the weekends as opposed to the other properties i mean i'd be i'd be better with that than you know just two hours friday two hours saturday for example so that's what we discussed last time um so to make a recommendation about more coverage now, if we're saying we don't think it needs coverage at all, that's a different story. And I would say I totally disagree. Well, I, I, I'll just restate what I said again, is that I think the current system of having a ranger who's there intermittently at various different times is effective. And um, I would certainly not support a recommendation in our final report that there be someone there on you know, a nine to five basis or whatever the recommendation was for those three days. Well, how about just Saturday and Sunday? You know, and also I'd say just hiring, well, logistically hiring why someone on the weekends might be a little harder as well to someone to give up two days. But, you know, is it is it Saturdays and Sundays? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, so that seems to make more sense to me than other days. But um, I think it's the intermittentness of it that that is what is successful. It occurred to me that, you know, what the ranger could do is, you know, it's it's kind of hard to give people a, a fine or a ticket for swimming, but they could fine them for for littering. And uh, maybe more emphasis should be put on that. Yeah. Uh, more and they signs have to be. up. No yeah. Littering. yeah. And they have to be there to, to witness it more often. So that was no, But I mean, you know, the the inter, again, the intermittent and, um, appearance of the of the ranger could probably uh if she busted a few people for littering would uh you know get people thinking about it and decrease it i think one of the things they did talk about uh was giving her some enforcement activities for some things um i guess we could ask about that if that was ever going to happen but again our, our job is to make the recommendations Maybe it is going to be um, something that the town does consider, but our job is to make the recommendation if we think it's important. So if we think enforcement of those things in, is an important activity, regardless of the time a ranger is there, but having the enforcement capability, perhaps that's a recommendation. I, I, I think it's. I think it's the... In, in enforcement is too much. It's it's a stick. It's too much of a stick. I think what you're talking about is education, telling people that it's not there. If a few people don't pay attention, you know, yeah. So what? Um, you know, finding people for for swimming off conservation land, I think, will just um, create a set of very angry people. Um, and I I don't think it accomplishes anything in terms of preserving the pond. So I think this, you know, this, this dissuasion that approach that's going on now is working, and 
should be left as it is. I don't. I don't think we're gonna. You know. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna you know, change my opinion. You're gonna change your opinion. I think it's just how we're gonna deal with this in a report that um, a vote was taken, but it's not really supported by all the members of the committee. Um, I don't know what else to say about this. Uh, we've all we've all made a statement. And um, maybe we take our table and then put the members who support it or do not. We all had agreed last time John was there too. And now it sounds like we're changing slightly. I understand. I don't um, remember so that we actually, you know. May, you might have left, John. I maybe what? you'd cut out. I wasn't sure. I but yeah, anyway. I don't think anyway, I didn't cut out. I you think I've been at every one of these friggin' meetings. <laughs> no, no, I think Jennifer, go ahead. Didn't did he, he? He, I think you weren't there when we were finalizing at the end of the last meeting. Maybe you had to go off early. Can't recall. Um, Carl, do you? Uh, there was a few other things that um, that you had added to recommendations. Um, I don't know if you want to share your screen or if you want to just throw a few of them out there. I, you know, yeah. I only have like uh, five more minutes myself. Um, I can share this if I can figure that out, but uh, I'm always share, share screen. Okay. You cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. Hang on. You go. I stopped. Okay. So well, that's the work. list so far. And the ones yellowed are the ones that were approved, although apparently not. So that's another story. So where, I mean, we can send did, this out to everybody if you want to. Where did three come now. from? Now, I don't see, I remember seeing that. And I listened to the meeting and didn't hear that. Um, It's, it's so small, I can't see it. <laughs> Um, Hang on. Let me do view. Can you make it bigger at all? Maybe I can. So, and I'll also say that about the signage in the cove area. Um, I've talked to, uh, well, the, the ranger, also Jane Prentice, and uh, about the signs. And there have been many, many, many signs over time in the cove, and they all just get picked up and tossed. Uh, so alternative approach to that might be to... Um, Put better signage at at the kiosks, but based on history, signage at the cove itself um, doesn't seem to have a long life. Yeah, I think they were uh, laminated signs on uh, balsa wood. So I think yeah. one of the things we were talking about was better, you know, more permanent signs too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carl. I can see parts of it now. <laughs> no. It's yeah. probably just my view. Maybe you guys are no, outside. no. It's 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 uh, it's it's not big. There you go. Oh, you can't read all this. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So, I think the boat, the yeah, the boat rental at White Pond. I I mean, it, it would, it's just an idea that's been floated. But I think well, this you know the. the uh, but I, the primary uh, recreation is going to potentially do it if we don't talk to them about it. So what do you have against boat rental at White Pond? Because a lot of people use boats at White Pond. I, I don't personally, I think, uh, Beth, you felt that it was just going to add more people or what was your thoughts? I, we talked, I think, last time that Garo, um, you know, Rogers Pond is going to, they have that already. I know in discussion they with um, Jane Prentice also, there's some concerns for people about what you people call aquatic hitchhikers. You know, do we want a bunch of boats coming in? Um, it was just a discussion. So I don't think we should well, approach so this. What do we have? To have a boat Alyssa, right sorry. There, Alyssa, but... Alyssa, can I finish, please? I don't think we approach it from the perspective that what we don't like about it. It was just something that Carl found out from Anna and we talked about it. 
um, and I'm just telling you what I heard about people worried about aquatic hitchhikers and that we do know that Warner's has the uh, kayak rental right now. So do we need that on top of, uh, do we need that here as well? So it's a I discussion. Think if, the, if you have a permanent boats that are there, so it's not a question of aquatic hitchhikers because they're not going anywhere. These, those fun dot, the rent dot fun kayak rental that they were considering, or it's like a locker, like, and so they didn't, they don't go anywhere. The boats are there. So that's an extra perhaps six boats on the pond. I We we have no idea what the concept would be. Carl yeah, it's a third Anna party. Anna that Anna yeah, it's says this that rent dot fund contract. and they have them in Maynard. They have them in Dedham. Um, uh, you can you can see it's a rack, you know, like, like a blue bike kind of rack, but for kayaks. The kayaks stay there. Um, you know, I don't think it's necessary, but I don't think there's any reason to recommend against it. I mean, what's wrong with six boats? We, we don't even we know have, if it's six, six boats. We have, we have no information. It is, it is a rack, like you talk about, Alyssa, like where they would rent, like a like rental, but it could be 20 boats. Like, we have no idea. No, no. So I could, I mean, we could recommend have... that they only uh, limit it to six boats then. I mean, I can ask Anna for more information. I, I don't even know where it's at. She said she gets somebody else to fund it, like outside the town or funds from another source. I can ask her what the status is if you guys want. Yeah, I think and if you look at the rent.fund website, you can see what these racks are. And um, as I said, it's a good way to get people who don't own boats to have the opportunity to get out on the pond, which is an allowed use. Does Walden have that, John? Do you know? No, they don't. They don't rent boats there. They don't. Okay. Uh, if you like, I can ask the uh, you know Anna where where this is at. Yeah, that's a question. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's a yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. I think you. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if okay. she knows enough. I mean, we've okay. seen them. Yeah. And look at that rent dot fun website because so you can see what it is. Um, because I I think you you wouldn't be. Because the, the boats are there. They're not, you know, so you don't have to worry about aquatic hitchhikers. Yeah, uh, that's um, just a new, I, we didn't talk about that last time. It was just a new thing that Jane mentioned to me that we should be concerned about. Um, and again, these are just things, Carl was just where we were discussing things. We're putting them down so we don't forget about them. That doesn't have to be there. This is why we're here to discuss, okay? All right. Um, well, the, like, what, well, is this list things that you... These are ideas or things that you ideas, know. ideas. So these are not necessarily things that yeah. the task force it's like, is supporting. No, anything. it's ideas. As we learned more from the action items that the various members went and talked, we learned more information. We were fact gathering and uh, information gathering, and so that was one Carl found out. So we put it out there. Do we have an opinion or recommendation on that? Well, it's hard to go from a recommendation if you don't know what. Yeah, we're we're just Alyssa. We're just when we we talk to the various people like Alan Cathcart or um, you know various people, just like you talk to the ranger. Do we want to put something down there that we don't forget about it and talk about it later? Doesn't mean it's going to stay. It just is a placeholder for right now. It's like the parking lot. Um, the next that one about signage was something that I again Carl talked with uh Park and Rec about. They I think that she thought it would be a good idea to encourage people to swim at the beach. That was where that one came from. Um, I think we get two things on here the same twice annual meeting with Concord Rec and WPTF representative representative to attend Concord Rec. So that's that's a duplicate. Yeah, I think that's important because we are going to one of the, the select one of the things we have to let the select board know is do we want is something we think needs to be in place still that there's some kind of a task force or advisory committee because to your comment there that you feel it's really important to attend these other meetings and I know um, you know Mary thought that was important in the past do we need do we should we think about this we don't have to talk about it right now do we need to have a white con something in place for the future yeah i think so to maintain or the website things may change you know there may be you know it could be a website that just refers to other things like the testing like white friends of white pond like you know concord rec but i think that i think we should have a central 
communication point. It's kind of confusing right now if you go on the Concord Town website. Um, and, and then also, you know, attending some other meetings. So there's coordination if, with the Concord Rec specifically, but maybe others. Like we talked about the uh, sewer reevaluation, for lack of a better word, in the town. Maybe there's some, some representation we should have there. As an example, there might there will probably be other things over time that, you know, we're here to represent White Pond, you know, White Pond's Hill. Who's we? Is it the task force? Well, Is I mean, that's to be planning? determined. I, I don't know if uh, Friends of White Pond does this or we do it or some some entity does it. That's a, that's a that's a good question. I mean, Friends of White Pond is not a town entity. I guess I, I don't know that much about them, so. But I think somebody should be somebody or some group should be re representing White Pond at these things. Wait, the ta the task force has got a sunset. I mean, we're not going to go on forever, so it'd have to be um, stewards or something of the you know like the old committee in the future. Right. And we're yeah. to we're to recommend to the town whether or not the stewards exactly. should be taken over. Yeah. So if we feel those things are important to, based on what Carl was just saying for it as an example, do we want to recommend that a, a committee be in place for the future? And then again, if we do, I don't know if it's our job, but to do the, the charter, what they're responsible for, what they're supposed to do, just like the Bruce Freeman trail or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever committees there are. Yeah, it may change over time too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it does, definitely. You're right. I mean, I don't I don't I think Linda's still here, but I, I asked Linda the question. I think, John, to your point, we are supposed to the select board would appreciate that we have our recommendations in by you know the end of this year. So we do need to consider what should be in place moving forward when the One thing that happens with these uh yeah, the I'm steward, still here. Steward committees is is that they're they're just uh, the only people that are on them are are um, people within the Fringe Basin or you know landholders right next to the ponds, and so we we could recommend if we want to that um, those you know the committee that's formed in the future be more than just the local people around the pond. Oh you know? yeah, it already did happen last uh, year at the select board meeting. Um, I, there was a motion that not more than two of not more than two of whatever this thing is, this committee could be, you know, from the like I'll just call it a butters for a better word. And the select board agreed upon that already. For for what? For the advisory committee? Yeah. Before they disbanded them? I mean, what well, I don't the, I thought the advisory committee was gone. It was decided that the advisory committee would know. And Linda, please speak up. I think you were probably at that meeting. Um, Are you referring to the, your task force? They, yeah. And then wasn't that what Henry Dane wanted and Matt just in general, that um, it couldn't just be people who lived on the pond to what John was just talking about? Is it Was it the task force or the advisory committee for the future? The task force itself? I'm not sure we've talked about an advisory committee for the future. Yeah. So it was the task force. Task force, yes. Okay. But so if the select board felt that was important, um, you know, the the makeup, if we advise that a committee be established for the future, we could put some of those things in there, John, like you just said, that there be at least some other outside community members. Is the advisory committee is still in existence? No, it disbanded. The task force took its place. Okay. I have to hop off. Um, yeah, me too. So uh, thank you, everybody. Um, and I look forward to finding out when the next meeting is going to be. And yeah. I will. Let's just, 
Jennifer and Alyssa, we we three have an action item. We have to at least get the survey stuff out. Um, and I'm hoping to talk to Evan this week because I'm I'm internationally traveling a lot in the next few weeks, um, and I'm hoping that he can chair another meeting sooner rather than later. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for the I think on the schedule like the first Wednesday in October, so that would be our next meeting time if we adhere to it. Can we send this um, spreadsheet around to everybody so that we can look at it a little more? Yeah, is there anything from an open meeting um, law that that would be not allowed? Why? Just supplying information, we're not deliberating. I mean, we're seeing it here at the open meeting, so why can't we? But it's yeah. just that, I mean- Because we're, be... we're all together, right? Right, but I mean, do I have to do a um, a screen capture to, have to, you know, to look at it? It's kind of small print, I, you know? Oh, yeah. Why don't you just send it around? Somebody's got it. No, I, I get it. I mean, I'm it's happy supplying to send it in information, yeah. isn't it? I and mean, we're not deliberating on it. Um, no, so we can think about it and then deliberate it, deliberate on it at the next meeting. I'm fine with that if it's okay. I think the thing you're not supposed to do is if if Carl sends it that we don't all reply all with comments about it. Now we wait and hold those. Right. So um, many of the committees just put on when they transmit information like that. Uh, do actually put on wording on there that says "do not reply all," um, and you could even go so far as to say for discussion at the next meeting or something. Yeah, do not reply all was the thing I remember. Okay. And what? Just just to clarify, what's the yellow highlighted as opposed to the other ones? Task force approved. No, I think it's messed up. Task force approved. See that? I thought there were only two. I others. thought there were two, too, but I think one, well, two, there, and three are similar. Two are similar. Yeah. But it but sounds like we're going to have a different uh, thought about that anyway. So yeah. don't oh, get oh. concerned. Don't get concerned with the highlighted right now because yeah. there's just been a complete turnaround. So Beth, I'll send it to you because you know you're you're the, you're the boss. So there you go. I'll and then you can distribute it to everybody. Today. Okay, thank you. This is um, Linda. You know, there, there's been some really good discussion tonight, and I hear I hear the uh, internal tension uh, around some of these things. But I also thought I heard, without the use of the terminology, that you're, at this point you're talking about draft recommendations. Um, where you felt you had consensus, but still I, I felt, um, I thought I heard language that at least led me to label it as, they sound like draft recommendations at this point that you haven't finalized them. We, you know, as you, as you yeah. capture some of these thoughts. We were catching some, but the ones that were the first two in yellow, uh, we thought, that we had agreed last meeting that at least those two, the APOD and the Ranger were um, were agreed upon as recommendations. Yeah, yeah. Um, you say that I was probably gone when you made that recommendation. Right, right. We, we know that. So go ahead, Linda, please have, continue. Uh, um, that in fact may be what happened, um, but I, I would think in general that you, you wanna at least reach a consensus about what the recommendations are, but still label them as draft, because sometimes um, once you go through all, all of the recommendations, you know, you exhaust your thoughts on that. It's, it becomes clear, clearer, and then you haven't locked yourself into um, a firm vote. When you say, just so I know, Linda, consensus, on these other task force you're familiar with, if there's five or seven or whatever the you know constituents are, is there a rule if you don't reach a hundred percent consensus, then it can't be a recommendation? No, no, no. I'm just saying that um, as you as you continue to debate debate these issues and um, refine your thoughts. You can one approach is to keep a, a list of draft recommendations that you've reached some consensus on, and then you could have a category where, you know, this 
has been considered as a recommendation, but we don't have consensus at this point. And then by the time you get to the end of that list and over several weeks, some of these things sort themselves out in a way that they're not right now. Under, understood. And as Carl's going to send this to me and I'm going to, I'll just reform it slightly, uh, just, just like you said. But in general, my question is, what if we're at December 15th and we, four people say one thing and two say something? How Would you have any advice about handling that? Yeah, well, it, what is your membership of your committee? We're six now. Was that the intention? Was that in the draft, the six number? I don't have it, it was, in front of me. It was seven in the beginning, but a person wasn't um, attending. So Mary talked to that person and um, decided that yeah, they okay. would be removed. So, I mean, technically, um, a, a quorum for you count seven even when you've got a vacancy there, okay? If that's what the charge read. Um, so, you know, uh, four would be a quorum there, right? And yep. so you may vote, uh, you may have four members who vote on a recommendation. And then, you know, if there's been sufficient discussion, sometimes you can say, you know, there was a minority p opinion that. But still the vote came in at, a higher, at, at the uh, first level. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I don't know if the charge says seven. I'll have to look at it again, but thank you for clarifying okay. that. And then, and, then, and then there may be in the end an item where you just simply, you it, it it's, feels very important, the issue, but you were not able to resolve it, even with a vote, Okay. Uh, and so then that will have to fall outside of your recommendations, but it's still worth a discussion in your in your final report. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing the issue, but that's how it works. No, that's that's helpful. Anybody else have any questions on that? All right. Okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, we have a few things that we're going to do, action items, and I'd like to call the meeting to close. I can't see the time at 8.59 p.m. Oh, no, 9 o'clock. It just turned. So thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, you, and we'll be in touch about the next meeting. It was a good good discussion, everybody. This is Linda. So Thanks, long. Linda. All right. Thanks, good night. Everybody.